Hi, I'm Lou, and I maintain the Visual Studio Code's ROS extension produced by Microsoft. In this first batch of videos, on which I'm calling Season 1, I'll talk about the extension itself, its history, features, roadmap. I'll walk through setup and use on various platforms, and then deep dive into some very specific things like debugging C++ and Python. Many of the episodes have overlapping content, so you can focus on the details that interest you specifically. So if you're interested in Linux and not necessarily Windows, you can focus on the Linux specific videos and you won't miss anything by not watching the Windows videos. And vice versa, if you're interested in Windows, you don't have to watch the Linux content. This video is what I'm calling Episode Zero, or the skippable content. You don't have to watch this video, uh, it just contains some data background information about the extension. Uh, I, I won't feel offended if you skip to the specific content. So let's talk about the Visual Studio Code ROS extension. The episode list um, is, uh, we'll focus on the extension itself, we'll break out the installing on Windows and WSL, uh, installing on Linux, general usage for ROS 1, general usage for ROS 2. Uh, I'll do a, a video on debugging Python, a video on C++, and then we'll do some other features, so SSH, containers, uh, and then some advanced debugging features. So a little bit of history. This extension was actually started by Dr. Andrew Short in 2016. Um, when Microsoft was started porting ROS to Windows, ROS 1 to Windows, we needed a way of debugging uh, ROS compositions. After talking with the Visual Studio team, they suggested why not use Visual Studio Code as a bridge between both Windows and Linux. There was an existing VS Code extension, so we reached out to Dr. Short and said, hey, we'd like to add Windows support to it. And at the time, he wasn't focusing on robotics, so he asked us to take it over. So Microsoft officially adopted the Visual Studio Code extension in 2019. In later that year, we actually added ROS1 debugging support. So this was actually both on Linux and Windows that allowed you to do F5 debugging for ROS1. And this was pretty transformative. Um, later on, we added ROS2 support in early 2020. Uh, this didn't include launch debugging because of the difference in debug or uh, launch behavior between ROS1 and ROS2. But we finally added that late, earlier in 2021. 20, uh, the way this works is pretty cool because we end up using Python and extracting it from the Python launch file. So we'll talk about that uh, later on. So the extension itself. You can find the marketplace uh, either by searching in VS Code or you can go to aka.ms forward slash ROS forward slash VS code, and that'll take you right to the marketplace extension. As of the end of 2021, there's been about 220,000 downloads. So this is a, a pretty cool milestone. Uh, once, once you cross 200,000, it's, it's pretty exciting. The sources are available on GitHub. It is completely open source. Uh, it's written in TypeScript and Python. Uh, like I mentioned, the Python interpreter uh, for launch files is actually written in Python, so we have some Python there. But the vast majority of it is written in TypeScript. Leverages the ROS web tools for URDF visualization, and this is a third-party extend or third-party web extension to ROS that the VS Code will shell out to in order to render URDF. Uh, supports Linux. Windows, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, and containers. And we'll talk about all of those uh, in this video series. Supports both ROS1 and ROS2. Uh, the ROS1 support is from uh, Melodic and Noetic. ROS2 is Foxy forward. Um, it, other distros may work, but they're not actively tested. Uh, and as always, uh, reviews, uh, pull requests, issues are always appreciated. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features of the VS Code ROS extension, and we'll deep dive into some of these in later videos. When we talk about automatic ROS environment configuration, what this means is that it will attempt to actually launch a, an appropriate ROS distro and the local workspace uh, environment before doing anything like 
calling ROS APIs or debugging. So this is something that the VS Code does automatically in the background. Sometimes it gets it wrong and we'll talk about how to fix those uh, and configure the extension so it does the right thing for your workspace. It allows starting, stopping, and viewing of the ROS core or ROS2 daemon status. And this is a little uh, widget in the, in the status bar that when you click on it, it will bring up a web view. Uh, automatically creates build tasks, so you can do callcon build or catkin build. Uh, it does support, there is code to support catkin tools as well. Um, may or may not work very well because it's not actively tested. Uh, it does use ROS run, so you can ROS run right from the VS code, although it won't attach debugging, uh, or you can do ROS launch as a command independently of debugging, and we'll talk about those as well. There's extension for ROS dep, so that you can resolve dependencies, and syntax highlighting, so all good things. Uh, additionally, there is support for IntelliSense, so that you can uh, as you're writing your code, you actually get ROS IntelliSense as well as C++ or Python IntelliSense. You can format your code using the Clang format from the MoveIt uh, code base. You can preview your RDF, as I mentioned, or Zacro files, which are uh, uh, macroized URDF files. And you can debug a single node by attaching or multiple loads by multiple ROS nodes from a launch file. And we'll demonstrate those in later episodes. So let's talk a little bit about the roadmap. And these are things that are planned for the future. So the very next thing that's coming uh, in early 2022 is RoboStack support. So RoboStack is a packaging of ROS that works on Mac, Windows, and Linux, and supported for ROS 1 and ROS 2. It uses the Conda Forge packaging system, so it, it can, you can have multiple environments at the same time. Uh, and today, the Visual Studio Code ROS extension doesn't detect those, so it doesn't try to source them. Um, so this is coming in the next release, uh, the, oh, the 8.0 release. Um, we do want to support wizards, which are walkthroughs of various different solution builders, so creating a ROS package and finding all of the appropriate dependencies, scenario builders, hey, I want to build a uh, driving robot or a robot arm that picks up this kind of thing, so you can assemble a workspace based on scenarios, uh, and package finders, give me a package that does X, like Velodyne LiDAR or RP LiDAR, and pull it into my workspace. Uh, Micro ROS 2 support, message visualizations, kind of RQT style, Web viz integration, so you can actually use the VS Code just like we do for URDF. You actually can use the R, uh, Web viz visualizer from within uh, Visual Studio Code uh, using the uh, appropriate channels that have been set up underneath the Visual Studio Code, so that should be pretty fun. Uh, web bots integration, so you can do simulation. Uh, intel uh, message IntelliSense, so as you're writing your uh, message files, it'll actually, if you have a dependency, it'll or a, you pull in a value, you'll actually get the IntelliSense for that. Uh, and then uh, WSL cross compile. So if you're on Windows in WSL, you can compile for a remote ROS robot, build it on your desktop or laptop, and then remote deploy it. So you don't have to have the development environment installed on that robot. So those are some of the roadmap items that we hope to accomplish in 2022. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out my blog, uh, Poly Hobbyist, my YouTube channel, which is where I'll be posting this, or on Odyssey as well. Thank you very much.